There were signs, red flags, but only in hindsight did they stick out like a sore thumb. Jake Davidson did not look the part, and while he certainly had problems, one could easily argue that they were problems that, given the right direction, the right influences, and correct therapy, all could have been avoided. Jake could have made a good life for himself. Tragically, that is not how it went down. Instead, Jake would go down a very dark and sad path that ultimately led to his own destruction while taking the lives of six others. Before we hop into the video, I just wanted to let you know to keep going. No matter what you're going through, I assure you that it's valid. Don't downplay your situation because other people may have it worse off. There is a better tomorrow on the horizon. Keep going. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, enough of my blabbering. Let's hop in today's video. This video is sponsored by MD Hair. Due to my long hair, I am always in the market for something that could help add some extra thickness or maybe give me some volume that I wasn't exactly getting before. Luckily, MD Hair was here to help me, so let's talk about how they can help you. MD Hair is a company that offers personalized hair regrowth products specifically catered to your needs. MD Hair's uniqueness lies predominantly in its customization. They don't give you just some random product and cross their fingers. MD Hair's AI technology analyzes each person's quiz results and scalp photos to give a customized treatment kit with the right ingredients according to their personal needs. And the best part is, you can track your hair regrowth progress over time by uploading a picture of your scalp after taking the quiz on the MD Hair website. MD Hair's treatment kit includes several different products with many distinct natural ingredients. You get everything you need to stop hair loss, heal your scalp, and make your hair stronger, such as shampoo, conditioner, a serum, and supplements. After taking some time to use the treatments, I noticed a lot of positive changes in my hair. One of the biggest things had to be the volume and overall texture of it. It also made my hair feel a lot softer. I am more than pleased with these results, and many people that have utilized MD Hair have to say the same. If all of that wasn't enticing enough, MD Hair is offering an amazing discount of 70% off the first monthly kit with full-sized products. All you need to do is click the link below or use my promo code NIGHT70. It's just that simple. Thank you once again, MD Hair, for sponsoring this video. Jake's background and upbringing. Jake was born in Plymouth and was brought up with his older siblings, Zoe and Josh. Mark Davidson, his father, was a fisherman, and Maxine Davidson, his mother, was a trawler. In Jake's younger years, he would spend time on Shetland Island with relatives. During the holidays, Jake's would often visit his uncle Terry, who lived on the island as well. Jake would comment that he had a rough background, living in government housing and with no car, Jake considered his life poor, with no opportunities ahead. His parents were divorced and his father had a long history of violence and criminal activity. Mark Davidson was estranged from his family, and at one point he was sent to prison for eight months for assaulting a fisherman by biting him on the cheek and not letting go. He also had previous incidents, including one involving a racial conflict with a bus driver, and it was said that he had an alcohol problem as well. Sadly, Jake followed in his father's footsteps and had a history of violence dating back to the age of just 12 years old. His first recorded incident, including an attack on two teachers, it involved spitting, headbutting, and headlocking one of the teachers. In 2020, Jake attacked some school kids who had laughed at him and called him fat at a local park. The CCTV footage of this attack was being passed around, and later Jake handed himself in for the crime, which was later dismissed due to the COVID pandemic. Emotional Challenges and Mental Illness Jake had a form of autism and suffered from mental illnesses. His father was aware of his problems and sought some type of assistance. Unfortunately though, their request was ignored, resulting in futile efforts. This meant that Jake's mental illnesses went undiagnosed and untreated. During the COVID pandemic, Jake would find his isolation overwhelming, and he very openly discussed this on the social media platform, Reddit. Jake, who is 22 years old now, expressed deep frustration and felt that no matter how hard he tried, he was going nowhere and felt physically that there was something wrong. He mentions that he thought he had some sort of radiation or chemical that had altered and damaged his blood and made him feel like he had aged 30 years in the last two years. Others in the comments encouraged Jake to just push through it because he was so young and he had the rest of his life ahead of him. In another post, Jake said that he felt better. He still battled with some things, but it was getting easier. Jake said that he had no real friends after school and had no social circles. He stated that he mostly worked in male-dominated environments, making it difficult to meet new people, specifically women. 
The Downward Spiral Jake had an apprentice job with a security company for about two years and then became a part of the incel community on social media. For those who do not know what an incel is, it's basically a community of mostly men who cannot attract women for whatever reason. Incels often come across as aggressive to both men and women who are attractive and sexually active. Jake mentions that he hardly had any contact with women and expressed a deep hatred for his mother. When asked how he felt about his mother, Jake just plainly stated that he couldn't stand her. Darren Wood, Maxine's partner, stated that Maxine was constantly terrified of Jake and that he had treated her like a slave. Jake also mentions that he wants to marry a girl one day and have a family. He spoke about battling to connect with all women. He even recalled that when he was 17, a girl expressed interest in him and even approached him, but he was too socially awkward to ask her out. So, nothing came of it. Jake says he despises being a virgin and having no libido, because it makes him feel as though, even if he did find a woman, he wouldn't be able to do anything with her. Jake had poor self-confidence and a complex about women. He believed he was unimportant and that no woman would ever want to do anything with him because he was a whiny, lazy, meek guy, as opposed to a big, strong, masculine, hard-working guy. I imagine this caused havoc on his self-confidence, and thus began the spiral. On Reddit, the community r slash morbid reality had a few conversations to confirm that overall, Jake didn't have a bad appearance and was not that bad looking and had a very friendly face. He was just a bit overweight, but certainly not ugly. Jake would begin to mention guns a lot in the social media conversations. It was obvious that he knew a good bit of information about it. He had clearly done his research almost a little too well especially considering the fact that he knew almost everything there was to know about any mass killing that he wanted to talk about. This is where things began to take a darker turn. Clearly, he was seeking acceptance and found it in the incel community. This way of thinking, coupled with mental illness, as well as an interest in guns and mass killings, is a clear recipe for something more sinister. Jake had a firearms license since 2018 and had a pump-action shotgun. When Jake applied for the firearm license, he did declare that he had a form of autism and that the police had contacted his doctor, who refused to approve it, but also did not object to it. This then resulted in the issuance of a firearms license and a firearm to Jake. But why did Jake need a firearm in the first place? Well, his mother said that he had threatened to use it on the kids in the park, but at some stage in his life, Jake turned himself in for an incident that resulted in his firearm being taken away and his license being revoked. But Jake wanted his firearm back, and he was pretty determined. He found a few ways in the legal system and took an anger management course that allowed Jake to obtain his shotgun back. This happened despite his own father reporting to the authorities that he had felt Jake had a violent nature and was very opposed to the idea that Jake should own a firearm. Jake's father also used his autism as a reason to stop his son from getting the firearm back. For reasons we can only attribute to neglect, the authorities dismissed his father's objections and returned the firearm to Jake. The Attack Jake posted a YouTube clip about how defeated he was and references himself as the Terminator, but he gives mainly just subtle hints as to what's to come. This was taken a few days prior to the shooting. Throughout the video, you can see his frustrations, and we get a glimpse of his point of view of the world. It's gloomy, and you can see he's losing himself. This would be his final message to the world, before Jake turned on the world in the worst way possible. It had been a nice sunny day, and families were outside walking their dogs, but from the outside of one particular house, the neighborhood could hear screaming and shouting. Jake had an argument with his mother, Maxine, on August 12th of 2021, which was just a few weeks after the shotgun was returned to him. After an intense verbal battle, Jake grabbed his shotgun and turned it on his mother. Nobody knows what was going through Jake's head, but he took the step he had threatened to take before and pulled the trigger. This would be the start of the tragedy of a mass killing in Plymouth. Jake took to the streets and shot his father, Lee Martin, and his three-year-old daughter, Sophie, at close range as they walked their dog. It was reported that the father tried to protect his daughter and was found dead, cradling his also deceased daughter. I genuinely couldn't have imagined the horrors flooding Lee's mind as he's struggling to protect his daughter. At this point though, 
there was no stopping Jake. A neighbor who knew Jake ran outside and shouted, Jake, what the f have you done? In utter shock, Jake responded by opening on Ben Parsonage, who dove inside and protected his mother by pushing her to the floor. Fortunately, Ben and his mother survived. I'm pretty confident that Jake's neighbor didn't anticipate this behavior from him. I mean, I think it would be only natural to go outside and yell at somebody and tell them like, like, dude, what are you doing? What is going on? I just don't think the neighbor knew how far gone Jake was at that time. Jake would then continue with this insanity and shoot another two people, a 33 year old man and a 53 year old woman. These two were severely injured and were later hospitalized and recovered. Jake seemed to have no preference or targeted individuals in mind, just aiming and shooting whoever was in his path. Some people got very lucky, and maybe Jake just assumed that these people were and didn't want to finish the job. I'm sure that there were screams from every corner witnessing this horror. Whatever the case, he only pressed on with this attack. No remorse and no hesitancy. Stephen Washington, a gardener by trade, left his wife, saying he would be back shortly. Jake then sh and killed Stephen, who was simply out and about. You have to wonder if Jake had completely lost his mind at this point. He had already killed four people. Kate had recently heard that she was about to become a grandmother. It was exciting news, and as she walked towards a local hairdresser, she had no idea that she would never meet her grandchild. Jake stepped into her street and took Kate Shepard's life. Kate Shepard would be the final victim in this tragedy. Although Jake did not kill anyone else, he did threaten to kill others in the streets. It makes me wonder if Jake knew that he would end up dead. Was that his intention the whole time? In 12 minutes, Jake had taken five lives, and after 10 minutes of taking his last victim, Jake turned the weapon on himself. Questions regarding the case. So many questions remain unanswered about Jake's thoughts. Jake's father said he had warned Maxine to minimize what Jake was taking in online because of Jake's autism. He felt that Jake's ability to soak up information might be detrimental to Jake. Maxine would ignore this request. Because Jake was an avid Reddit user who voiced his issues and thoughts on the platform, when this story hit the news cycle, there was a lot to be said about how evil his actions were. One user expressed concern that he didn't appear to be someone who could do this, and that his Facebook was a mess, but didn't reflect anything too alarming. Another user said that he knew a lot of people and wasn't as isolated as the media made him out to be. In a thread relating to the mass killing, many agreed that the incel community only fed into what was his downfall. His lack of self-confidence and the aggressiveness of this point of view only pushed an already fragile mind to act in such a heinous manner. Later, there was an investigation into why Jake was given his firearm back. Jake's father expressed deep regret and sorrow for the families of the deceased and stated unequivocally that he opposed the reinstatement of Jake's firearm. It was also brought up that since the firearm was revoked, why was it returned to Jake when he had clearly had a problem with violence already? Why did Jake even need a firearm to begin with? The police ultimately offered an apology and admitted that the firearm should not have been given back to Jake. The police would discover 57 files on Jake's computer that contained unacceptable content. One of the unacceptable files that Jake had watched was Elliot Roger, who had injured 14 people and killed six by either stabbing or shooting them and then ended his own life. He had sent a lengthy document with the ending, I am the good guy in all of this, to a select few just before the incident. The incel community initially sainted Jake as well, but many in the community were opposed to the killing of a child. Surprisingly, this has cast a negative light on the incel community, and many have labeled them as terrorists for encouraging such heinous behavior. I think it's a funny phrase to say like, oh, they're just casting a, casting this negative light on the incel community, as if it's ever had a good bit of light casted on it. Could this all have been avoided? Isolation can be very damaging to certain types of personalities. This, along with a complex about being unable to attract women, and thus ending any hope of having the family that he clearly wanted, would certainly take its toll. 
In a world full of negativity, and as much as Reddit users encouraged him, he really needed proper therapy to equip him how to deal with these concerns and worries. I imagine that with the right guidance and maybe a support group of positive natured individuals, this could have opened doors to healthy relationships and friendships. Honestly, all of this could have been avoided if the authorities had taken his family's concerns to heart. They sought help but were ignored. Again, we don't know how vigilant they were in seeking help, but it was initiated. Overall, this is a tragic story of a man who selfishly took the lives of five people and left five whole families to grieve. This man's actions were nothing short of evil. The families of the loved ones have pursued a case against the police for negligence in giving Jake the firearm back, and we can only hope that we've learned from this and take mental illness very seriously. This entire situation is tragic, and I do hope that the family eventually comes to terms with the loss of their loved ones and are able to move on. Before we do hop in the end segment, I would like to have the patron scroll. Thank you all for supporting my weird little videos on the internet. You don't have to, but thank you. It does mean so much to me. Thank you all. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed the video, why not like and subscribe? It definitely helps me out. If you didn't though, why not dislike and let me know what I can improve on for next time. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you on the next one.